This one is problem 1.13. It says compare the force F required to just start the lawn roller over a 75 mm step when the roller is pushed and it is being pulled. So there are two cases here. The first one is for pushing it and the second one is for pulling. The important keywords here are this just start. What happens when we have the rolling motion just starting, just starting off rolling. Okay. So in this case what will happen is right at the bottom at this point right here and this point right here as soon as the roller is about to start it's going to lose contact here and if it loses the contact the normal reaction at this point which was earlier there it will become zero. So when we start drawing the FBDs we will not uh, draw this normal reaction force there because it has already lost contact. The second important thing in this problem is what is happening at these corners. Okay. What we are going to assume here is that there is no friction in this problem. So at this point right here, we are going to get only normal reaction and that normal reaction has to act at a surface that is perpendicular to the body and the perpendicular has to pass through the center of this roller. That's why we are going to get a normal reaction that goes this way. Okay. So now when we start drawing the free boy diagram of both of these cases, uh, in both cases we are going to get vertically downward force which is your weight of the roller. Then we are going to get this normal reaction which is coming from the step corner and in this case also we are going to get this normal reaction which is this and since there are two cases I am going to name this as N1 and this one as N2 and the other force that we have is the push or pull force. Okay, So in this case since it is being pushed the F force that is going to come will be along this line right here and this is F1 and similarly in this case your F2 is going to be acting here. Now you can see that the angle of this force is already given in the problem. This is at 30 degrees. Now what about the angle of normal reaction N1? Okay, For that we can focus on this triangle right here. Let me draw that separately. Okay. This dimension right here is half of the diameter. Diameter is 600 mm or 0 0.6 meters. So that's why this length is 300 millimeters. And this vertical height is this is the total radius minus the step. So 300 minus 75. So this becomes 225. If I call this angle alpha, we can find out the value of sine alpha, which is 225 divided by 300. And this gives us a value of alpha equals to 48.6 degrees. Now, <clears throat> with this, the setup is ready and we can apply the static equilibrium condition and we can do the force balance on both of these rollers. So, if I do the force balance in the x direction, in the x direction on the first roller, we have F1 cos 30, which is positive, and N1 sin alpha. If this angle is alpha, if you take the cos component, it goes in the negative direction. So, I can directly write this has to be equals to N1 cos alpha. In the y direction, we are going to get positive forces, which is N1 sin alpha going up. And the negative side, we are going to get F1 sin 30 degrees plus the weight W. Now, in the second case, the angles again here, this one is 30 degrees and this one right here is alpha. So, we can write F2 cos 30 degrees positive has to be balanced by N2 cos alpha. And in the y direction, we notice that your N2 sin alpha is going up plus F2 sin 30 is going up and this will be balanced by the weight W. Now you can uh, notice one thing here, if I write the second equation so that weight is written on one side, I can do this. So now if I compare this equation with this equation, you can see in the case when we are pushing it, both N1 and F1 because there is a negative sign involved, they are not acting as a team and they are not going together. But in this case here, since both of them are positive, it looks like both of them are working as a team. So it looks like uh, the, the counter force that we get 
is getting more support in the second case. Now when we start solving this what we will do is from the first equation which is this one and this one here in the second equation we are going to replace the value of n1 coming from the first equation. So n1 is f1 cos 30 degrees divided by cos alpha here and similarly your n2 is equals to f2 cos 30 degrees divided by cos alpha. Now when I substitute this in the second equation if I put it back here and take f1 common I can write down cos 30 degrees sin alpha divided by cos alpha minus sin 30 degrees equals to w and since w is on the other side here also a similar equation can be written for f2 we are going to get cos 30 degrees sin alpha divided by cos alpha plus sin 30 in this case equals to w so now if you simplify this we can write this as f1 times i'll just rearrange all this cos 30 degrees sin alpha minus sin 30 degrees cos alpha and equals to w cos alpha this is coming for the push case and similarly we get f2 cos 30 degrees sin alpha plus sin 30 degrees cos alpha equals to w cos alpha for the pull case now we can see that we can use trigonometric relations so that the first relation can be written as w cos alpha divided by sin alpha minus 30 degrees and the second one can be written as w cos alpha divided by sin alpha plus 30 degrees and without even doing any calculation at this point we can notice this angle will be more than this angle right here therefore the denominator is going to throw a bigger value and that's why f2 is expected to be a lower number okay and when you substitute the value of w which is 900 newtons w is given as 900 newtons and alpha we have calculated as 48.6 degrees when you substitute these two numbers your f1 which is your pushing force to just roll this roller comes out as 1866 newton approximately and similarly your f2 for the pull case comes out a much lower number which is 607 newtons so intuitively also we can see this that pulling something is easier than pushing something that's why the force is coming lower in this case.